Welcome to QBank Pro Academy. The nurse is preparing to admit a 38-year-old patient with preeclampsia. Which of the following are normal findings during pregnancy? Select all that apply. A. Hyperglycemia. B. Hemoglobin and hematocrit levels decline during pregnancy. C. Leukorrhea. D. Ketonuria. The correct answer is B. Hemoglobin and hematocrit levels decline during pregnancy, and C. Leukorrhea. Explanation. There are a number of normal physiological findings that occur during pregnancy. They include B and C above, and increased plasma volume. Because the plasma volume increases to a greater extent than the red blood cell mass, there is a measurable decrease in hemoglobin and hematocrit. The nurse is counseling a 24-year-old premogravid patient about risk and complications during pregnancy. What are physical findings of fetal alcohol syndrome? Select all that apply. A. Shortened limb length. B. Myocarditis. C. Congenital abnormalities. D. Growth retardation. The correct answer is C. Congenital abnormalities. And D. Growth retardation. Fetal alcohol syndrome may occur when the mother drinks alcohol during pregnancy. Alcohol is teratogenic and physical and cognitive neurological delays may occur. Physical findings include short palpebral fissures, a flat midface, upturned nose, indistinct philtrum, and congenital heart disorders. A 19-year-old primogravid patient has been smoking since the age of 14. What are the risks associated with substance abuse during pregnancy? A. Abruptio placenta. B. Growth retardation. C. Gestational diabetes. D. Edwards syndrome. The correct answer is A. Abruptio placenta. And B. Growth retardation. Explanation. Substance use or abuse in pregnancy will adversely affect fetal growth and increase the risk. It places the fetus at risk of abruptio placenta, fetal bradycardia, and poor growth and development. Smoking, for example, may increase the risk of stillbirths and birth defects. The nurse is discharging a patient after an ultrasound and Doppler examination. When is the fetal heart detected on Doppler? A. Fetal heart rate is detected at 10 to 12 weeks. B. Fetal heart rate is detected at 4 to 6 weeks. C. Fetal heart rate is not detected until 20 to 22 weeks. D. Fetal heart rate is not detected until 16 weeks. The correct answer is A. Fetal heart rate is detected at 10 to 12 weeks. Explanation. The best answer is A, but remember that fetal heart rate can be detected earlier, by 5 to 6 weeks. Fetal heart rate is a sensitive indicator of the well-being of the baby during growth and development. Fetal heart rate is a valuable indicator of fetal distress. The nurse is preparing to admit a 38-year-old female with preeclampsia. Which of the following indicate anemia during pregnancy? Select all that apply. A. Hemoglobin, 9. Hematocrit, 28%. B. Hemoglobin, 13. Hematocrit, 39%. C. Hemoglobin, 10.5. Hematocrit, 30%. D. Hemoglobin 15, hematocrit 42%. The correct answer is A. Hemoglobin 9, hematocrit 28%. Explanation. This question is testing the nursing student's knowledge of the normal hemoglobin level. You must also understand that the hemoglobin value will decline during pregnancy as part of the normal physiology. A is the correct answer. The nurse is interviewing a 23-year-old female for follow-up after treatment for bacterial vaginosis. The patient asks why she needs a pap smear test. The nurse correctly answers, A. This test screens for cervical herpes. B. This test screens for cervical neoplasm. C. This test screens for thrombocytopenia. D. This test screens for sexually transmitted diseases. The correct answer is B. This test screens for cervical neoplasia. Explanation. The pap smear test is a screening procedure that can be done in the office to evaluate the patient for cervical cancer. 
Abnormal findings suggest a cancerous or precancerous process. The test checks for abnormal cells. Cells are scraped from the opening of the cervix. A 36-year-old female asked about her risk of gestational diabetes. What is the appropriate screening test for gestational diabetes? A. Checking a blood glucose at the initial prenatal visit. If it is greater than 150, further testing is indicated. B. Hemoglobin A1c greater than 6.5%. C. Checking a blood glucose at the initial prenatal visit. If it is greater than 126, further testing is indicated. D. Urinalysis for glycosuria. The correct answer is B. Hemoglobin A1c greater than 6.5% and C. Checking a blood glucose at the initial prenatal visit. If it is greater than 126, further testing is indicated. Explanation. Recognizing untreated hyperglycemia in pregnancy is important because it is associated with an increased risk of miscarriage and birth defects. Screening is recommended between 24 and 28 weeks. However, women at risk will be screened earlier. The nurse is analyzing a laboratory studies on a patient. All the following are abnormal findings in the urinalysis during pregnancy. Select all that apply. A. Glycosuria. B. Nitrate negative. C. White blood cells in the urine. D. Ketonuria. The correct answer is A. Glycosuria. C. White blood cells in the urine. And D. Ketonuria. Explanation. The urinalysis that is done at the first prenatal appointment will usually test for glucose, protein, bacteria, ketones, and white blood cells. Abnormal glucose or ketones in the urine may indicate gestational diabetes, and white blood cells or bacteria may indicate infection. The nurse is admitting a 26-year-old multiparous patient with hypertension. Which of the following are common findings during pregnancy? A. Ankle edema. B. Chest pain. C. Headaches. D. Cramps. The correct answer is A. Ankle edema. C. Headaches. And D. Cramps. Ankle edema, headache, and cramps can occur during pregnancy and are not uncommon. It is important to know the normal physiologic findings during pregnancy and be able to determine when the health care provider should be concerned. A prima gravid patient has had hemorrhoids for the past two weeks. What are interventions that may reduce or provide relief from hemorrhoids during pregnancy? Select all that apply. A. Hot showers. B. Daily laxatives. C. Increase fiber in the diet. D. Drink plenty of water to avoid constipation. The correct answer is C. Increase fiber in the diet and D. Drink plenty of water to avoid constipation. Explanation. Hemorrhoids usually occur in the second and third trimester. They may result from increased constipation and venous pressure. Relief from hemorrhoids may come from sitz baths, eating a diet high in fiber, sitting on a soft pillow, and increasing activity such as walking. There are a number of changes that occur in thyroid physiology during a normal pregnancy, and this is due to the increased metabolic needs during a normal pregnancy. We can see this reflected in thyroid function tests. Hyperthyroidism can complicate pregnancy. Graves' disease is one of the most common causes of hyperthyroidism in pregnancy. Hyperthyroidism can affect both the mother and fetus. The most common cause of hypothyroidism is Hashimoto's thyroiditis, or chronic autoimmune thyroiditis. Hyperthyroidism during pregnancy is seen by a low TSH and elevated T4 and or T3 levels. In hypothyroidism, maternal thyroid function tests reveal a low T3, a low T4, and an elevated TSH. Other changes in pregnancy include an increase in iodine requirements. Iodine requirements are higher in pregnancy. When there is a severe deficiency in iodine requirements during pregnancy, we will notice a reduction in maternal T4 production. This will result in inadequate transfer of maternal T4 to the fetus and severe and impairment of fetal neurological development. 
Although rare, excessive iodine can also result in harmful effects to fetal development. Symptoms of hyperthyroidism in the mother may include an irregular or rapid heart rate, increased blood pressure, hot flashes, sweating, irritability, weight loss, weakness, difficulty sleeping, hair loss, nausea and vomiting, and tremors. The fetus may experience a high fetal heart rate over 160 beats per minute, fetal goiter, poor growth, and advanced bone age. If hyperthyroidism is severe, cardiac failure may occur. It is very important to monitor the fetus for fetal thyrotoxicosis, as well as fetal growth weight. Symptoms of hypothyroidism in the mother include fatigue, weight gain, constipation, dry skin, hoarseness, muscle weakness, dry hair, and hair loss. Symptoms of hypothyroidism in the newborn may include fatigue, poor appetite, yellowing of the skin or jaundice, decreased muscle tone, constipation, and congenital goiter. Thyroid hormone synthesis begins around the 18th to 20th week and gradually increases. As the fetal thyroid gland develops, maternal thyroid hormones are important for growth and development. Treatment is important in these patients. The mother will often be treated with thyroid hormone and thyroid hormone levels will be monitored. Dosage adjustment of the thyroid medication will be done to maintain the mother's TSH within the appropriate reference range. The World Health Organization has recommended 250 micrograms of iodine daily during pregnancy and lactation.